Hi guys, I am Boaz, your mathematics teacher in a lovely room. Today we are going to deal with the quadratic equations. Now you see they're asking what must be added to 25x squared plus minus plus 9 to make it a perfect square. Now in quadratic we all know it is in the form of the ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. That one everybody knows. People have been taught this topic of quadratic. Now A, B, and C normally stand for the constants. So when you see the A, the B, and C, I've just called them the constants. Constant simply means numbers. They're just numbers. It can be four, five, quarter, decimal, fractions. That's what it simply means. Now when we have this, they can either ask in a quadratic to solve a quadratic equation by using a quadratic formula, by using completing square formula, or by using product and sum. But here is a perfect. So number one thing that we need to know, what do we mean by a perfect? A perfect means, an example is somebody asking you x plus y square. When we square it, the equation that is going to be formed will be called a perfect square equation. Now, how do we square this? You take the first part squared plus then x times y times 2, which we get 2xy plus the last part square. So this is called a perfect square because it can be factorized where we take x plus y times itself. Just like somebody taking 8 times 8, which is giving 64. So 64 is a perfect square because you can get back to its square root, which is 8. Now that you've understood that, how do we go about in a, a problem where we have an example they had given you 25x squared plus dash plus 9. What must be added here to make it a perfect quadratic? And I want to teach you the most easy way to go about it and very direct. This is what you are supposed to do. When you get it like that, the first step is to compare it with the original quadratic formula, which simply says ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now, the part for the ax squared is given. 25 is like a. The bx is not given. So we can let that part be bx. That is the first step. Then you come and rewrite it, 25x squared plus bx plus 9 equals, and now this is how this is my method works, get the square root of 25, which is 5, square root of x squared, which is simply x, because if you square the 5x, you get 25x squared, plus any letter or a, a letter that is not here, you can call it maybe p, then put in bracket square. That's how this formula works. Take the square root for the first part if it is in this format. Then add to a letter you don't know, then put in bracket square. Then you go back to this formula. You square the first part, which is 25x squared, plus the 5x times p times 2, which becoming 10xp, plus the last part, you square it. Then we compare the coefficients. You come and say the 25 compared to the first 25, the 10xp you compare with the bx. So you come and say the bx should be equal to the 10xp. Your x will cancel. So whenever you see b is like the 10 of p, we are just comparing the corresponding parts. Then here is 9. You compare to p squared. Because the last part and the last part. If p squared is 9, now p is supposed to be 3. Because when you square 3, you get 9. When you square p, you get p squared. So in this case, you come and say if p is 3, but you had already noted that b was supposed to be 10p. So 10 times 3 giving you 30. So the part that was missing, b is 30, should have been 30x. So 30x is, is what makes it to be a perfect square. So what do I mean? By getting 30x, so your equation should be 
25x squared plus 30x plus 9, which implies we can get the product and we can get the sum. So in any case, you can get the product and the sum in any quadratic equation. We say it is a perfect square. Allow me to rub this part. Now, we want to do another part here which we were given plus that is a dash plus 72x plus 16. So what must be added to this to make it a perfect square? So we have to compare it with the original. So the part for the x squared was not given. The part for the bx is given. The part for c is 16. So if you don't know it, you simply pick from the original formula. Then you come and say the ax squared plus 72x plus 16 equals, remember I taught you how to take the square root from your left hand side. The square root of a, a remember is a constant. The so square root of a constant must give another constant. So you can let it maybe be m. Square root of this x squared is x. Plus, you add it to another constant we don't know. You can call it even k. Then you close the bracket, then you square. The procedure is very simple. Take the square root of the first part. But if it is a letter, give any other letter. If it was t, give even y, as long as it is not in this equation. Okay, let's start squaring. Take the first part squared, which is the m squared x squared, plus the mx times k times 2, which is 2 mxk, plus the last part squared, which is k squared. The method is always to expand it. Then we compare coefficients. The first part equate to the first part. So you are a x squared is like the m squared x squared. But x squared will cancel. So whenever you have a, you substitute it with m squared. Then you compare the next part, the 72x and this part you say, 72x equals 2mxk. The x will go, you can divide both sides by 2. So 36 here becomes the mk. If 36 is mk, then you also compare here. The last part was 16 and the last part was k squared. So if 16 is k squared, k becoming 4. Because if I square k and I square 4, I still get 16. So my k is 4. So you come here and say 36 becomes k times m, but k is 4, so it is 4 times m. We can divide both sides by 4, the 4 will go, so our m becomes 9. So it means if m is 9, but we had already known initially that a was supposed to be m squared. So if m is 9, but a is supposed to be m squared, so I will square 9, I get 81. So the value of a becoming 81. So it speaks through that, a being 81, so what was missing was 81 x squared. Yeah, that's how we work out the perfect, so that we can easily factorize it. Allow me to wrap this part, then we do another question. There are quite a number of them over there. Now, uh, we want to pick one, for example, these ones are just working. Let's rub that part because it is not there. Now we come and say, if in any case you have been given x squared plus 8x plus dash, what must you add there to make it a perfect square? So it is very simple. You have to compare it with the original equation. So... The ax squared here is like 1x squared, so it is the same. The bx is like 8x because b is 8, x is x. The c I don't know. You can just let it be c. Then equate square root of this one is just 1. Square root of x squared is x 
plus another letter that is not here. Call it even T. Then put in bracket square. That is the step. Then let us square here with you. The first part squared is x squared plus x times t times 2, which is 2xt, plus the last part squared, which is t squared. Then we compare the coefficients. The first part is the same as the first part. Next part, which is 8x, compare it with the, the 2xt. The x will go, you can divide both sides by 2. Now our t comes to be 4. When t is 4, then we compare the last part. Our last part c is supposed to be last part t squared. But t being 4, so c becomes 4 squared, which is 16. So what must have been added here to make it a perfect square is 16. Which means your x squared plus 8x plus 16 is a perfect. Why? Because if you look at the product you get, 1 times 16 is 16, the sum here becoming 8. Now what are the factors? The numbers that if you multiply you get 16, but when you add them you get 8 is 4 and 4. So that tells us it is a perfect square because we can factorize it. In which way? We are going to write the x squared. Instead of 8x, now this one go with 4. So 4x plus 4x, because 4x plus 4x is this 8x plus 16. Then pair them out. The x into x plus 4, what is common here? 4 is common into x plus 4. Now x plus 4 is common, so we write x plus 4 into this x here plus 4. But when you take a number times itself, example 8 times 8 is 8 squared, which is 64. So here we are going to write it to be x plus 4 in bracket square. So that's why we are calling it a perfect square. For example, somebody says 64 is a perfect square because you can find its square root. The same is applicable here because x plus 4 times x plus 4 provides this equation. So we can rule and say this equation is a perfect quadratic equation. Let me do another one. But the method does not change. It's just comparing them. So you can also decide and do many of them. Now let me pick an example. Maybe uh, I pick another one. For example, here. No, here. We have, for example, the part for the 42x. We have the 49x. Let me do one more here. For example, somebody giving you 49x squared minus dash plus 4. So what is missing here? The first part, you have to rewrite this quadratic equation to compare, plus bx plus c. So the part here is comparable. The bx is not given, the c is there. So we just come and write here bbx. So you can come and write 49x squared minus bx plus 4 equals, you take square root of 49, which is 7, take square root of x squared, which is x, Plus another letter, maybe small t, when you square it, then square the first part, you take 7x squared is 49x squared plus 7x times t times 2, which gives you 14xt plus the last part squared, which is t squared. Then you take the 49x squared, you compare, then you take here, minus bx equals 14xt, then the x will cancel, minus b is like 14t. Then you compare the last part, you have 4 is supposed to be t squared, which means t becoming 2. Because when you square 2, you get 4. When you square 2, you get t squared. Now t being 2, so your minus b become 14 times t, which is 14 times 2, giving you 28. Your b becoming <laughs> negative 28. When you have the negative here, you take it the other side. So in this equation, what was missing? Our b was negative 28. So it was supposed to be, remember it was minus, and this minus now becoming 28x. 28x 
is now the perfect square. Let us try and test, test out what really makes it to be perfect because it should have factors. So we come and write here our 49 x squared plus 28x plus 4. The product becomes 49 times 4 is supposed to be 9 times 4 is 36. I carry 3. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3, 196. And our sum becoming 28. So what are the factors? Should be 14 and 14. Because 14 times 14 is 196. 14 plus 14 is 28. So if it has factors, we say it is a perfect square. Now the last part that I would love to touch, when they give you this, sometimes they can ask you, now you know how to find what is missing by equating and corresponding it to the original equation. Now an example, somebody comes now and asks you to solve. Somebody asking you to solve, maybe x squared plus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Now, you have always to compare it to the model, which is the, the ax squared plus bx plus c is 0. This is what Singaporeans call the models. Please always write the formula because it leads. It makes your subconscious mind to know what you're talking about. But remember, whenever you have this form, for you to get x should always be minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this a is x squared is x squared. So means your a is 1, your b is 7, your c is supposed to be 3. Just compare it with the original. Then here in the formula is minus b and b is 7. So it is minus 7 plus minus b squared. So 14, 7 squared is 49 minus 4 times a times c. 4 times 1 times 3 we get 12 over twice a which is 2. Then it's getting to be minus 7 plus minus square root of 37 over 2. But that part you can easily use your scientific calculator square root of 37 becoming 6.082. So here yeah, it, it implies minus 7 plus minus 6.082. 8, 2, divide by 2. Let's start with the positive. Minus 7 plus, so you can start from your calculator minus 7. You go to plus 6.082. Then what do we get? Negative 0 0.918. Then you divide by, you divide by 2. Divide by 2. We get, uh -huh. what did I do? Negative 7 plus 6.082. 082, then we divide by 2, we get negative 0 0.459. That is the first root or the first value of x. Then the next, you take the negative, which will also get the other value of x. So guys, if you like the video, please subscribe and join us because we do mentorship. We do conferences with teams and online classes. You are always invited. So people are doing quadratic across every level, in the middle school, in A levels, all the way to the campus. These are some of the basics that are very, very instrumental for you to succeed in any quadratic work. But remember this, not only in quadratic, listen to this, very important. This is an, an advice globally. Remember this, my channel is an international channel all the way, all the continents, all the countries, every school, from Cambridge system to, to international, to international baccalaureate, local system, the topics will still be the same. But remember this, always use the model. Number one, when you have a question paper, always read the most difficult questions, then you solve the easy question. How does this model work? Your subconscious mind will be working on the difficult questions while you are solving the easy one. If a question comes maybe touching on a triangle, a kite, a parallelogram, always draw the diagram. This model works, guys. Listen to this. Always draw the diagram. It's called the model. It helps you remember. Maybe somebody is teaching you, asking you a question. First of all, you have to think from which topic does this question come from.